Hey, I'm Anna. And I'm Marshall. And something you all might not know about Anna is that she's a music pastor. She's totally blessed and gifted in this area of music. And she's gonna tell us a little bit about that. So I've wanted to do music since I was a kid and thought for sure this was gonna be the career that I was gonna follow. And then watched as God brought me down many years of doing everything but music and trying to not feel disappointed in that, but instead choosing to say, God, I trust you in not only your will, but the path that you have me on. And it was really cool to watch that come full circle as he blessed me with a job that was just that, doing music. And I'm actually, yeah, the now the music pastor here in Oakville at the Meeting House, which is crazy. That's so cool. And it's so cool that God blesses us all in our own way and gives us all a job that we can do together. So let's watch this video and see what that's all about. When someone needed a boat made, what did the people in the town say? We know a guy. Hi friends, my name's Paige, and one time I had a job with my friend to paint her room, and it was going really well. Then we look on the floor, and there's paint all over the floor. So luckily, we get to clean it up fast, and in the end, she had a beautiful newly painted room and a very clean floor. <laughs> now, I share this story with you because we can be given a job, but sometimes it doesn't always go to plan, and that's today's big idea. Jesus gives us a job to do, go and make disciples. So last time in our series, the Rock, we get a glimpse of the earth-shattering results of Jesus' death and resurrection. An angel told Mary and Mary Magdalene to go tell all the disciples to go to Galilee and there they would see him. And so the woman told the 11 disciples. Oh yeah, there were only 11 disciples at this point because after Judas had betrayed Jesus, he felt so guilty for what he had done that he took his own life. So the 11 disciples went to the mountain in Galilee where they had been told to go. Matthew tells us that when they saw Jesus there, they worshiped him, but some of them doubted. That's actually kind of cool because they worshiped him even through their doubt. Then Jesus spoke to them, a really awesome, really clear, really solid mini speech. Let's read from Matthew 28. Then Jesus came to them. He said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So you must go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And you can be sure that I am always with you to the very end. So what is authority? That's like saying, because I've got all the power and all the influence and all the ability. So when Jesus says that, he's telling us that God, the Father, has given God, the Son, Jesus, all the power in heaven and on earth. Because of that, Jesus says, go and make disciples. Now, if I were able to give you all the power and all the authority in heaven and on earth, I'm guessing that you probably wouldn't choose to say or do something like this. I'm guessing that if you had all the power and all the authority, you'd probably ask for all the candy or ask for all the money or ask for all the cats. <laughs> but Jesus is not thinking of what's best for himself. He's thinking about what's best for all of us. He says to go and make disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything he has commanded. Baptizing them means they've committed themselves as disciples for life. To obey what Jesus has taught means people need to know what Jesus actually said. And at the core of what Jesus said was to love God and love others. Those are some good things to be taught and obey. And then Jesus says that he will be with them always, even to the ends of the age. When Jesus departs from earth, the Holy Spirit comes. God's spirit is with us, always. Okay, now here's why this gets extra interesting for us. Jesus said this to his disciples, and he told them to make more disciples and pass along all of this. Then those disciples make more disciples and those disciples and it keeps going. 2,000 years later, here we are, disciples as a result of all those disciples who came before. So now it's on us. How will others find out about Jesus and learn to follow him? Through us. It's awesome and big and really exciting that Jesus gave us this job. So how do we do that? 
Well, we get to know Jesus really well through the Bible, through asking questions about him to people who are more experienced Christ followers than us, and we can talk to him through prayer. As we do that, we get to know him, and we share what this all means to us with others. As we are disciples, we help other people see what it means to be a disciple. And that's actually how we make more disciples. It's pretty great. So go, let's do this. Well, my name's Paige, I had a blast, and I'll talk to you soon. Quick, turn to the person next to you. Oh, and discuss the following question. Question time. Jesus entrusted his kingdom mission to his disciples, and that has trickled down to us, me, and you. What do you think it means to go and make disciples now? If you don't necessarily know how to make disciples, just go out and share about Jesus the way that you would share about anything else you're interested in. Because the reality is, is we do it anyways. So if you're looking to share about Jesus, just tell your friends and family your experience with him. So we're gonna hear Tyler's story. And he tells us about how he felt God nudging him in a place that he spends a lot of his time to go and make disciples. So let's watch this. Jesus gave us a job. He said, go and make disciples. So I figured, why not do that in professional wrestling? When I was four, my dad was flicking through channels and wrestling came on the TV and I was instantly hooked. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. When I was in school, I got bullied a little bit and my way of coping with that bullying was to go home and watch wrestling. I always knew that regardless of what happened in the day at school, I knew that when I would come home, I could watch wrestling and be in what my mother called my empty space. It was a place where I could be safe and know um, that I could be entertained as well. I really fell in love with the sport and art of professional wrestling. When I was 18, I enrolled myself into a professional wrestling school, and for some reason, it came so natural to me. Within three weeks, I was doing maneuvers that people don't do until like a year into training. Nothing had really come naturally to me in terms of activity or sport in the past, so as I was reflecting on that, I was questioning, maybe God has me in this for a reason. Three months later into my first match, I was getting ready to perform in front of a live crowd for the first time. And there was just a calmness and a peace um, that came down over me. The only way to explain it is that there was just a blanket of peace um, and that something bigger than me uh, was saying yes to this event and to this time in my life. It being a calling from God to go out and make disciples uh, in the professional wrestling world. I was wanting to tell my one friend about Jesus, so I just went for it. I said, hey, you should follow Jesus and be a Christian because he's great and it's awesome. And his answer caught me off guard. He said, why should I be a Christian? And more, and more so, why are you a Christian? And my gut reaction was because my mom told me to believe it. In that moment, I realized that was not the correct response. And I had two choices. I could either run away from the faith that was passed down to me, or I could actually figure out what I believe and why I believed it. So I decided to actually dig into scripture uh, and read it a lot more. I ended up reading it daily and reaching out to the people who were a bit older than me, who could have influence on me and who had Christian perspective um, through the mentorship relationships I built, reading scripture again and praying intentionally daily uh, I came to a realization that Jesus is real and he's tangible. And it wasn't just this faith that my mom had given to me, and it was actually quite freeing. And when I started training, I realized that professional wrestling was a brotherhood, it was a sisterhood. Everyone's in this together. We're not in front of people to actually hurt each other. It's a show, we're here for entertainment. And so to get inside of a ring with your best friend, 
to, and put on an entertaining wrestling match was the goal. So from that comes super strong relationships. And through that, uh, I was able to share Jesus with others. And the thing about professional wrestling is a lot of people who are involved with it would never step foot in a church. I truly felt that God had given me the skills for professional wrestling and the love of the sport for me to actually go after people and tell them about Jesus in this environment. In one of my favorite matches of my career, I jumped off the top rope and fell 13 feet to the floor and I compressed three vertebrae in my lower spine. I was told by the doctor that if I didn't stop wrestling, uh, I would end up in a wheelchair. But I truly felt, again, much to my chagrin, that God was leading me back to higher Christian education. Now that through wrestling I had owned my faith and understood what I believe and why I believe it, I needed further training on scripture and my relationship with Jesus. I ended up going to Emmanuel Bible College for four years and I graduated with a Bachelor of Theology in Pastoral Ministry. Professional wrestling gave me a place to own my faith. Bible college gave me a place to learn more and go farther. Now, everything I've been through, I believe, have led me to where I am at, which is I have the amazing opportunity to work for an international nonprofit youth organization called Young Life. I get to go into the local high schools and come alongside high school students and tell them about the hope, love, and mercy of Jesus Christ. I get to tell them that He is real and that they are loved accepted, and that they can have hope because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Question time. Tyler's story is definitely unique. What stood out to you in it? Why? It was really cool to see how much Tyler loves the sport and art of professional wrestling. But it wasn't just the sport, it was so evident how much these guys really care about each other. Absolutely, they train so hard to perfect these moves and it just shows what practice can do. So guys, don't be trying this at home. No, for real though. <laughs> um, what I loved about Tyler's story was the fact that he had a desire to share about Jesus with his wrestler friends. And he did it anywhere, whether they were on the road, in the locker rooms, everywhere. It just shows, to bring it back to today's big idea, that you can share about Jesus anywhere. There's no place that you can't do it. You could do it at school, at home, at your friend's house. Just go and do it. Absolutely. Well, it's time for our small groups. Why don't we break off and see what this looks like in our lives? See ya.